Welcome to this webinar entitled How to get started with cellular IoT development with AVX and Nordic Semiconductor. This webinar is hosted jointly by Elector and Mauser. My name is Jan Buiting and I'm your moderator for this webinar. Welcome to everybody who has responded to the call to register for this webinar in the Elector eZine newsletter and other publicity, of course. Uh, welcome also to our two presenters, uh, Petter Mirre from Nordic Semiconductor and Carmen Redondo from Ethertronics AVX. So that's right, we have two presenters instead of one uh, for this webinar and each will be doing their own presentation. The total duration of the two presentations is about 40 minutes and during the presentations you should feel free to formulate your questions to the presenters and post them in the chat box. You should see it on your click meeting screen. And please start your questions with a capital letter Q, so we can easily identify it as a question. And selected questions found in the chat box, um, by myself or the presenters, um, will be moderated and discussed after the webinar. And the live Q&A session with the presenters and myself starts straight off after the second presentation by Carmen. Um, the Q&A session is scheduled to last about 10 minutes, uh, depending, of course, on the number of questions uh, we receive in the chat box. That's it for my introduction. Uh, we switch, switch the screen to Petter for his presentation, and then uh, to Carmen with her presentation, and then I'll be back with uh, you for the live Q&A session. Please uh, be sure to post your questions in the chat box. Enjoy the presentations. Thank you for that presentation. Yeah, so I'm uh, Petter Myhre. I'm a product marketing engineer from Nordic Semiconductor. Today I'm going to present the uh, NRF91 series, our cellular IoT solution. So I'll begin with uh, talk a bit about uh, how cellular IoT fits into the low power wide area network uh, landscape and uh, give uh, a short comparison between the two cellular IoT technologies, LTM and MBIoT. Then I'll talk about our offering, our solution, uh, about the chip itself, the software, and also development tools. And then I'll hand it over to Carmen. So this is how Nordic views the, the LP van landscape. So you kind of have the older cellular technologies, the 2G and uh, LTE CAT, CAT1 Plus and 3G, which is uh, they kind of have uh, enough uh, throughput, but they are uh, high power. And then uh, on the other hand, you and you have the, the low power technologies that have a bit too little throughput, uh, the Sigfox and LoRa and so on. And then you have the cellular IoT technologies, LTM and MBIoT which is around here with uh, around 100 uh, kilobit per second throughput and also the low power. And uh, we believe in these technologies because they are open standard. So they are uh, developed by uh, organizations and uh, are always evolving. And uh, we also believe that's a good thing for customers to be able to choose the chip to, chipset that they want from uh, different uh, vendors. So when you use these uh, technologies in in your products, you can uh, leverage the existing infrastructure that is all, already there. All the base stations and, and cellular towers are already there, uh, so you can leverage this. They're future-proof. Um, you have the organizations that develop these specifications. They uh, always try to be backwards compatible so that your device will uh, be, be operational in, in the decades to come and uh, they provide enough throughput, as I said, and because there is large infrastructures already there, it all offers a very scalable solution so that you can uh, build, uh, just have a few devices or or extend that to, to thousands or uh, even more. And uh, of course, security and reliability is built into the technologies. And uh, these are well proven, uh, well proven technologies uh, when it comes to security, and also offers uh, quality of service because these operate in in licensed bands, where uh, 
interference is managed. So just a quick comparison between the two cellular IoT technologies. You have LTM and MBIoT. The LTM is also called uh, EMTC or LTE CAT M1. It has a bandwidth of uh, 1.4 megahertz compared to the 200 kilohertz of MBIoT, which typically means that you get uh, more throughput with LTM, but longer range with MBIoT. You can see the, the throughput difference as well for uplink and downlink. It's uh, approximately 10 times more for, for LTM. The range is a bit, bit uh, shorter for, for LTM. And these numbers there are uh, kind of typical uh, numbers for range. And the maximum uh, range is uh, it's much higher than this. LTM offers mobility. This means that you can move uh, move around and switch from uh, from base station to base station uh, in a very seamless way without dropping the connection. And a uh, big difference between the technologies right now is that LTM has roaming while MBOT doesn't. But they both offer a pretty long battery lifetime, up to 15 years. Then we have some strengths of the two technologies. So LTM has higher throughput, it has lower latency. Um, so these different strings kind of uh, defines what type of applications that are most suited uh, for, the, for the two options. LTM also offers uh, roaming so that you can go from country to country with, uh, with the same uh, SIM card and uh, leverage that. You have mobility, as I mentioned, and it's uh, most power efficient if you're uh, at medium data rates. So we actually send, the more data you send, the more power efficient option is LTM compared to MBIoT. And it's also suitable for TCP, TLS, and to end secure connection if you want to send IP packets and, and use uh, TCP and TLS for that. MBIoT strength is a longer range and it's more power efficient at, at lower data rates. Some, some typical LTEM applications. You have the asset tracking, where you want to track uh, anything. Uh, it, it will can be containers, trailers, uh, packets or pallets or luggage or pets. And then typically you would want to combine this technology with, uh, with GPS. You have variables. You have the smartwatches and the, and the GPS uh, watches where we want to send uh, quite a lot of data. You have the retail and a bus, point of sales, where you need uh, short latency and, uh, and security and uh, also probably want to send uh, some data. And uh, here's also included like vending machines and, and, uh, and when you want to have uh, point of sale terminals in, in small shops. Home security, door locks, alarms, smoke detectors, where you want to have uh, a short latency for, for what's going on. Then on the MBIoT side, uh, you have typical application is a smart metering uh, for electrical, gas, or, or water metering. You have smart agri agriculture. We put out sensors into the ground and uh, these are can be in pretty remote areas where you need to where you need that extra range that MBOT provides. Smart city, you can have a smart uh, smart parking, smart lighting, and waste management as typical applications there, and predictive maintenance for elevators, escalators, uh, and, and factories, for example. Then I just want to show. Uh, how the the rollout is going for uh, for these two technologies all over the world. So this is this is taken for from the gsma.com uh, uh, website and kind of show uh, where where there are LTM and MBOT networks uh, available. So uh, yellow is uh, LTM only and uh, blue is MBOT only and purple is uh, LTM and MBOT. So you can see it's uh, it's getting uh, there. It's uh, the US is covered and Canada and 
and uh, quite a lot of the countries have gotten both uh, technologies right now. And um, but then over to our our solution, the NRF ninety one series. So this is uh, cellular IoT made easy. We are trying to to lower the adoption barriers, make it easy for the end customers to to integrate this product into their. Uh, or integrate this chip into their product. And we want to kind of have this self-service uh, deployment where the, the customer can just buy a development kit and get all the software and documentation uh, from us. Uh, we don't want to hide it, we just provide it and then uh, you can develop your application and, uh, and uh, integrate it into your product. Uh, we offer the complete package. So it's an integrated application and connectivity in one packet. You have LTM and MBIoT in in, uh, in the same package. You can switch between them and uh, leverage the strength of both. You have GPS inside, and everything is developed by Nordic. The software, hardware, tools, and we also have one-stop shop for for all support regarding this product. It's a global uh, global operation with one variant, so we have multi-band support for worldwide coverage. And we have teller regulatory standard and, and carrier certifications to cover the, the, the whole uh, globe. It's a fully integrated SIP system package for cellular IoT. It's a very, very small uh, solution, 10 times 16 times 1 millimeter with application processor, LTM modem and more. This will enable new applications and markets and uh, lowers the bill of material. It's the lowest, uh, lowest power. Low power is in our DNA. We have been doing low power chipset for, for decades now. And everything here is built from scratch with low power in mind. And this is cellular IoT for everything else. It's designed and optimized for IoT applications. And uh, will make a lot of new applications feasible with low power, smaller size and improved uh, coverage. So then over to our our solution offering here. So it's a complete uh, solution. You have the NRF9160 system in package or SIP, which has the dedicated application processor and, and memory. You have the multi-mode LTM MBIoT modem with uh, integrated RF front end, and you have GPS. You have the NRF Connect tool platform, which integrates the NRF Connect SDK. Uh, and some other tools for, for desktop, cloud, and, and mobile. We have the NRF 9160 development kit, or DK, which is a standalone development kit for development on the NRF 9160. Uh, it comes with an eSIM from iBasis so that you can uh, plug and play and get this connected and test out an application quickly. It also has an NRF 52840 port controller. It's uh, one of our short range Bluetooth LE chips you can also combine those technologies here so the nrf9160 avoids uh, cellular modules it's a system in package and it's fully integrated for for cellular iot dedicated application processor and memory the lt modem with integrated rf front end it has gps and it's pre-certified for for global operation a single SKU. It also has PMIC, passives, and crystals integrated, and it's a very small package, 10 times 16 times 1 millimeter. So the application processor is fully programmable. It's a 64 megahertz ARM Cortex M33, and uh, it offers ARM Trust Zone for trusted execution, and it also has ARM Cryptosol for application layer, layer security and for doing root of trust. It has one megabyte of flash and 256k of RAM. For uh, for um, <clears throat> options here, you can you can choose between having all these different uh, digital interfaces: uh, SBI master slave, UART uh, two wire master slave. You can have four of those in any combination. And you also have PDM, I2S, uh, PVM, and ADC uh, to to use it. And it comes with 32 GPIOs. 
When it comes to the multi-mode LTM and BIOT mode, this is a half uh, duplex option and uh, offers frequency deviation duplex. It implements the EDRX and PSM power saving modes uh, that comes with these uh, new uh, cellular technologies. We also have the coverage enhancement modes in implemented and you have GPS and it supports uh, IPv6, IPv4, TCP, UDP, TLS and DTLS. And uh, with the RF front end, this is uh, capable of doing 3D, 23 dBm output power and supports uh, LTE bands between 700 and 2.2 gigahertz uh, frequency bands. This just gives a quick overview of the, of the chip. So you have the NRF91 SOC inside and then we integrate the RF front end and passive crystals and power management IC. And then the only thing you need to provide is kind of the power source, for example, a battery. You connect your sensors and then you need a, a SIM card, either uh, an embedded one or a, or a, or a um, yeah, not embedded one. And then you can have, uh, then you need antennas for uh, LTE or GPS. Uh, and you can also have uh, one antenna that does both of these actually. So a few more details on the GPS. This is optimized for asset tracking and uh, it's using satellite trilateration and it runs uh, concurrently with LTM and, and MBIoT and combines the GPS and cellular positioning data. And you can uh, use, uh, use the LTE antenna for GPS or have a dedicated GPS antenna. But then I just wanted to talk a bit about certifications because that's really important for, for cellular IoT. So this just shows our regulatory certification map. So the, the dark blue here are where we have a regulatory certification for, for LTM and or MBIoT. And then the lighter blue is uh, where we have ongoing uh, regulatory certifications. And uh, we hope that soon that this map will be uh, dark blue all over. And then I also added this, which uh, also shows that we have quite a lot of uh, band coverage. We have more than 20 bands and uh, we are covering, starting to cover quite a lot of the, wor of the world. And uh, if you go to the website down on the site page here, you can read more, more about our certifications and what the plans are there. Here you can see the, the software architecture for the ship, for the ship, for the ship. So in the application processor, you typically have the, the user application, and then you have uh, the application layer protocol, the co-op, MQTT, HTTP, lightweight M2M, and then you use the BSD secure socket API to communicate with the modem, where we run the DTLS or TLS uh, security protocol, TCP, UDP, or IPv6 or IPv4. And then you have the, the lower, lower layers of the LT stack in there, uh, L1, L2, and L3. And uh, the modem uh, firmware is uh, provided by, uh, by us, so you don't need to think about that. Uh, you just want to, and then you, we also provide application layer protocols, so you just build your user application using the software development kit. So we have a holistic security solution. So the LTA modem provides uh, the SIM card authentication and encryption. And then you have cloud authentication and encryption with uh, TLS or DTLS. While in the application processor, you can uh, do root of trust and trusted execution with, uh, with trust zone. And you can ex also extend that with application layer security using the ARM CryptoCell. It also supports uh, doing secure uh, firmware over the air to update uh, modem and uh, application uh, firmware, which is really important in, uh, in cellular IoT applications. So uh, to develop your application, you can use the NRF Connect uh, SDK or uh, NRF Connect Software Development Kit. And this is the software development kit for the NRF 9160. This integrates the, the Zephyr Artos and it's publicly hosted on, on GitHub. 
and offers uh, source code uh, version control management management with Git. And uh, if you use this with Nordic devices, you get uh, Segger Embedded Studio IDE support for free. So when it comes to the specific examples, you have a, an asset tracker example. Uh, so this sends GPS coordinates and state uh, of the switch on the on the development kit to the NRF Connect for cloud, which is our cloud solution. So when you when you buy a development kit, you can load up this uh, this example and you can see what happens uh, in an interface on the cloud uh, very quickly. You also have an LTE sensor gateway, and this uh, utilizes uh, the NRF 52840 SOC on the kit and con uh, collects data over Bluetooth LE. And then this is relayed first to the NRF 9160 and then relayed uh, further to the NRF Connect for Cloud over either LTM or MBIoT. And then you can see the sensor data in the cloud. We also have an AT client example which is a comp complementary firmware to the LT link monitor tool, which is a desktop tool that we also provide so that you can uh, check which basis, base station you are connected to and which band you're operating in and how your link is behaving. So NRF Connect for Cloud, I also may already mentioned this, but here we can use use this together with examples. So the asset tracker will, will display GPS coordinates on, on a map and also the switch state. And uh, for the LT sensor gateway, it will display the, the sensor data. It also allows you to, to manage your, uh, your NRF9160 DK. So you have the onboarding there in the cloud and SIM card activation. And you can also check out uh, how much data you have left on the, on the SIM card. So already mentioned this, but uh, for uh, support, um, everything or this complete solution is developed by Nordic. The, the system package, firmware, the modem firmware, the software development kit and everything and all the tools are developed by Nordic. And uh, this means that we can support you with everything, every step of the way. We also have something called the Nordic Thingy 91. Uh, this is, uh, it's not a development kit, it's more like a prototyping platform for the NRF 9160. It's kind of uh, made uh, made for, for asset tracking, uh, proof of concepts. So it uh, has uh, everything you need to, to do this. Uh, the system package already have have the, the GPS and, uh, and uh, the LTM and MBIT modem. But here you also have a come with a SIM card and a battery and uh, and all the sensors that you need. And here you use an uh, antenna that uh, is both for GPS and uh, an LTM and MBIoT. We also offer the NRF 9160 development kit, and this is a single board development kit. This is the all you need to buy to to get started with your development has the same certifications as the NRF 9160 SRP, which is quite, uh, quite a lot. It also comes with user programmable LEDs and buttons and switches so that you can easily do output and input to the, to the SRP. It has a dedicated uh, LTM and MBIoT antenna, uh, a dedicated GPS and a dedicated 2.4 gigahertz antenna for the NRF 52840. And the LTM and MBIoT antenna is from Ethertronics, and this is my last slide, so I want to hand it over to Carmen from Ethertronics to talk more about their antenna solutions. Thank you, Peter. So this is Carmen Redondo from Ethertronics ABX. I'm a head of marketing for EMEA, and I'm going to talk about the antenna used in the development kit from, from uh, Nordic. But also I will talk about different antenna design challenges and considerations 
that we must have into account when designing an, uh, a product. Because the antenna is not an afterthought, and it is very important to consider the antenna in the very early stage of the design, uh, ideally when the mechanics are not frozen. But let's start with the uh, development kit from Nordic. Um, the antenna used is the antenna P822601 or the mirror version uh, 02. Here is a table with the type of performance. Uh, it has very good efficiency for all the bands from uh, 700 megahertz to 2.2 giga, uh, gigahertz. And one thing into consideration is the ground plane size. So this development kit has a size of 153 times 63 millimeters PCB. And I will explain later why this is important to have in, in mind. So all the information about this antenna is online. There is a data sheet in AVX uh, webpage. Uh, there is an application note to understand how tuning this antenna, uh, what is the different performance for different PCB sizes, the DXF. So if you are going to integrate this antenna, you can directly import the DXF file in your Gerber or your device. And of course, this antenna is available online and here is the link where you can find it on Mouser. So one of the good characteristics of this antenna is that normally uh, the antennas are adjusted in tuning uh, to different environments with the matching components. So you can have a Pi uh, network in the, in the feed of the antenna where you can improve your, your tuning or your matching. However, uh, with this antenna, we have some pads in the bottom side of the PCB below the antenna uh, in which we can make the antenna longer or shorter. So you, as you can see in this, um, there is one pad which is for the uh, uh, low frequency and one pad for the high frequency. There you can add zero ohm resistors or you can cut the lines uh, to make your antenna longer and shorter, which is, means that you can uh, change the electrical length on the antenna to make it uh, to go uh, lower in frequency and higher in frequency. And this allowed to have better efficiency that if you just only match your antenna with uh, matching components in the matching network. However, when we look at the applications, um, not all the applications have the same size. All the devices here, there are some examples uh, with AVX antennas on it. And you can have from lighting to small trackers, uh, smart metering, and all of them will have different sizes, different requirements. This is why, as I mentioned, it's good to have a starting point with the development kit, but this is not something we can use for all the applications. But before looking into the different type of antennas, I will go through some considerations that we need to have in mind when designing uh, the device. One of them is the um, misleading uh, name of the narrowband IoT. Many customers uh, say, oh, it's narrowband, uh, it should be a narrowband antenna. But this is only narrowband in the terms of operation. Here you can see the difference. If you use ISN 868 megahertz, then yeah, you have a narrowband antenna because you only use an, a frequency plus minus megahertz. However, in narrowband IoT, you can use bands like 20, 8, 3, and then you will need a much wider uh, bandwidth antenna. The next consideration is the, uh, if the device is a wearable or is close to the body. And the reason is that there is a big absorption from the human tissue and it can um, decrease the performance up to 10 dBs uh, when it's close to the body. This is something very important to have into consideration uh, in the very early stage of the device because you need to calculate how far from the body you need to place the antenna in order to have the required performance. This is something that can be tested using some phantom uh, heads, arms, uh, hands, and this is something that uh, we have in ABX. So you remember I was saying to pay attention to the size of the development kit, uh, which was 153 millimeters. And the reason is because the size of the PCB in embedded antennas, it creates a big impact on the efficiency and antenna performance. As you can see on the left lane, this is the, the one of the demo boards of the um, 
of an LTE antenna, uh, which has a similar length as before, and as you can um, think, is similar to the cell phone size. There, you can uh, achieve up to 80% efficiency and then around 65% or 60% efficiency in the high bands. So what happens when you cut the PCB? So from the left picture to the right picture, the only difference is that the PCB has been cut with some scissors. We haven't changed any matching components. We haven't changed anything. It's the same board. And in the high frequencies, we can see there is no big difference in performance, while on the low frequencies, you can see a big decrease in efficiency. And this is something which cannot be avoided and is very, very important to have into consideration um, to have the right antenna and the right measurements to verify your perform the performance of your device when you are designing it. It's not enough to just think that you can reduce the size of the PCB and shrinkle the components and everything would be fine. You need to have into account that the antenna performance will be strongly affected in the low frequencies. Another consideration is the antenna surroundings. And some of, it, of them it could be obvious, like for example, a big metal components or wires around the antenna. However, other ones are not so, uh, people might not be so familiar. Like for example, the potting used in some in products in, have to be in right uh, environments. In the example on the left, we can see a uh, park meter. It has antenna inside. And we can see that when we add the potting, the antenna gets the tune. So it's very important to have this into consideration for the test on the final device. And also, of course, make sure that the potting use is always has the same recipe. So there won't be changes in production. And of course, there are many other uh, uh, considerations to have into account. Like for example, there are other antennas that could be coupling with, between them. Uh, cable routing can also affect audio components near the antenna, maybe high speed digital traces uh, if they are not decoup well decoupled with inductors. There is a plenty of uh, considerations to have into account to have when you have embedded antennas. But I will tell you later how we can help you with this. Of course, when you are having um, a new device, uh, it's very important to test antenna performance, efficiency, radiation patterns, and antenna is well tuned. This is something that AVS can help you with. We have design centers all around the world in the US, China, Taiwan, Korea, in Europe. We are based in, in Nice in the south of France. But also we can help you with the active testing of the full device. It means that we can measure TRP and TIS for LT, CAT M, and Arobana IoT. And then you will have the real performance when you use the chipset, in this case for Nordix, for example, and with our antenna, and you will be able to go confident to the operator once you have to pass the certification. So we come back to the same question. There was a lot of considerations to have into account. Uh, there's a lot of type of antennas. So at the end of the day, what is the best antenna? And the answer is not only one. Everybody thinks, oh, the best antenna is the one that performs the best. That's not the case. You can have some customers, they want to have the cheapest antenna, which is good enough. Some other customers, they want to have the antenna, which is the easier to imp uh, implement in production. For example, have an SMT solution. Some other ones was to have really the best performance. I don't mind how, how expensive it is. I just want to have the best product in the market. So depending what is your a requirement, we can find a suitable antenna for you. So if you want to use standard antennas, one of the first stops it will be good is to go to the uh, our antenna selection guide that you can find in ABX uh, webpage. And there we can, help, we can guide you towards uh, the right antenna for your device. For this, we have prepared a checklist that is, uh, uh, it takes some in consideration some of the points we were uh, reviewing before. Uh, and then you can try to understand what is the best type of antenna you need for your device. Is it something you can have on board, uh, you need off board, what kind of uh, uh, standards require your device, uh, what are the challenges for your device? Is it like 
uh, you are forced or uh, tight by your mechanics, or you need to have very high RF specifications. So we have we have prepared this checklist in order that not to miss any of the considerations you need to decide uh, have in mind. Uh, but it's very important to have this in, in mind in the very early stage of the design. Don't wait to have the final mechanics. It's better to first decide what are the antennas I need, what is the size of the device, and then you can uh, design the rest of mechanics around this uh, preferred setup. This is the best uh, recommendation in order to have the best connectivity of your device. Once you have all these answers, uh, all these questions answered, then you can, the, we have prepared some kind of uh, tables when you can see different part numbers of our antennas. And then you can check depending on the frequency, de depending on the technology, if you want uh, on board, off board, uh, external, indoor, outdoor. There are different combinations. And this is a live document. So it means that these are not, are not only the antennas we have, there are many others, new ones coming. And at the end of the document in the antenna selection guide, actually you can see what are the new antennas that will be adding to this portfolio. So for example, if we look into LTEM antennas and narrowband IoT, we, we remember we were talking about the PA22601 antenna uh, using the development kit from uh, Nordic. Imagine that you need to have a smaller antenna. Then we have another option with a smaller antenna, which covers uh, the same bands. Or uh, you, that's not uh, small enough. We also have vertical PCBs when it has very, very narrow footprint, and that will be allow you more space for your components. Or maybe you don't have space at all. Then you can use this FPC antenna with a UFL connector. So you only need to place the connector on the PCB. Or of course, you might have a metallic device and you want to have an external antenna, this is also another option. So this is just an example of four antennas, but we have many others that you can check online. If your device is very small and the bandwidth from a passive antenna is not enough, we also have the option to have an active antenna. So uh, we have designed uh, our own uh, SP40 switches, which allows that with a passive antenna, you can switch band depending on the band of use. Uh, this is also a product that you can find online. And what it allows you is like, if you look at the um, plot on the right side, you can change the um, uh, tuning of the antenna depending on the band in use. And then you can always um, benefit from a minimum efficiency in the whole, in all the bands. So these are, just to clarify, this uh, chipset, normally it's uh, um, linked to uh, different matching components. Uh, it could be added to, um, in the parasitic or in, in a, a ground of the antenna. And by this, what you do is you are changing between them. You can use a one mode on, or you can have all on, or, or different combinations. So you can benefit from a big range of different uh, matching uh, for antenna. So we're discussing that the chip from, from uh, Nordic, it also includes GP, GPS. Um, so normally when people think about GPS, it thinks about patch antennas. And patch antennas provide circular polarization, which is a benefit to receive the signal, GPS signal. However, it's only a benefit when it to is towards the sky. If your device is not pointing to towards the sky, that means that you are losing this uh, circular polarization. Or if you are in, in a multipath environment, you might also lose, miss the circular polarization. This is why there are other options that you can use, like ceramic antennas, uh, you can have uh, stamping antennas, FPCs. There are different solutions which are GPS, but without circular polarization, and they can work as fine as a, as a patch. We also have a range of active antennas for GPS. And by active, I mean that it has the LNA and the filter included. You can have it in patch in different sizes. And we also have an FPC, which has the LNA and filter included directly. So on the, on the customer side, you don't have to, to design anything. Everything is already embedded in the flexible PCB. You just need to connect your antenna to the board. 
So to finalize, uh, the key benefit of the low power one networks, as uh, Peter was saying before, is the low power consumption. And so as important it is to choose the right chipset to have very low power consumption, as it is to select the right antenna. Because if you want to enhance the battery lifetime and to increase the data rate with the same amount of power, it's very important that your antenna is efficient and, you're an, and you don't lose the dBs in the transmission. So this is all for my side. Thank you very much. Fine. Thank you very much for uh, hosting this webinar. And welcome for me personally uh, live, um, all the viewers and on specifically all the people who have been asking questions. Very, very useful. I see a small list in front of me. And what I am going to do is um, select a few questions with the help of uh, Beatrice in the background, possibly. Um, to ask to Petter and to ask to uh, Carmen, of course. Um, that's the first question. Uh, thank you, Beatrice, for, for posting that one. Um, that is for, for you, Carmen, um, on AVX. What uh, research did uh, AVX do on the effects of PCB dielectric constant? Oh, that's, that's epsilon E um, on the antenna performance and stability of the technical parameters, etc. cetera. Um, Carmen, have you um, any answer on that? And as mounting is not affecting very much the, um, the antenna performance. Okay. It might affect when, if you print the full, PC, the, the full antenna on, on the board, and this is why we normally don't recommend uh, using this kind of uh, antennas, especially for, for covering large bands like uh, narrowband AOT or LTM. Yeah, okay. Uh, Carmen, thank you very much. This, no problem. Uh, yeah. The next question is also for, for you, I think, um, handled by Beatrice and posted by, um, no, I can't read, just can't read the name of the poster. Uh, is there any performance data available covering a, a GPS antenna versus a shared with uh, the LTE? <laughs> So I don't have data to, to share here. It's true that sometimes you can combine, uh, use the LT antenna also to cover the frequencies of the GPS antenna. Uh, the the, the um, drawback here is that you need to add a switch to, or you need to have a uh, GPS extractor to be able to separate the LTE and the GPS. So this is at losses. So this is why normally when it's possible, we try to have the antenna separated. Uh, the losses could be if you use one switch, you can have 0 0.5 dBs or up to 1 dB losses on the on the performance, yep. the graduation. And for the GPS antennas, since the, the, the receiving is already very sensitive, we prefer not to add extra losses. Yeah, okay. The, we do the certifications uh, yep. for, the, for the SIP with the modem on it. With the uh, NRF9160 DK, that's what we use for uh, for doing all the certifications, and uh, we we try to make all the all the certificates for for the different ones uh, available, so that you can use those as a reference. Uh, and we also provide uh, integration guidelines uh, to integrate the SIP into your product, and also a reference uh, layout. And Nordic have any plans to integrate the GNSS receiver? Didn't really plan to uh, comment on uh, on a future roadmap, but uh, mm -hmm. that might be. So, uh, but if you you should reach out to to one of our sales representatives if uh, this is something that is uh, of interest, and then uh, okay. he can probably give you a better answer of this. Ah, okay, still coming up, <laughs> still under consideration. Uh, this one is um, I f I think for Carmen again but she may have covered it in the previous question. Uh, for Carmen, explain the use of LTE antenna for GPS. I think you just did that in the previous uh, question, didn't you? Yes, uh, so, so normally the, the LTE antenna goes from 700 megahertz up to 2.7 or 2.17. So there is a way to be able to, to modify the antenna to include also the GPS. Mm -hmm. It's always nice to have a lot of questions, really. And uh, we are very grateful to everybody who has been posting these uh, questions and, of course, to Petter and uh, Carmen for answering them. Thank you, Beatrice, for that. And I am closing the webinar. I thank everybody for this, uh, for their attendance. Very kind of you. 
very professional uh, presentations, I think, and very useful and deeply technical, I have to say. <laughs> I am a radio amateur myself, and uh, I really enjoyed the, the talk by Carmen on uh, antenna considerations. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining, and uh, see you next time. Thank you.